Welcome back to live coverage of the 2008 presidential elections. Live from McClatchy's offices in Washington, D.C. Joining me now is Rob Ritchie. He's the executive director of Fair Vote, an organization dedicated to fair and fair uh, universal access and fair representation. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So how is the vote going so far today? Uh, is it fair? Well, it's hard to know. Uh, there have there, been a lot of snafus that we've been hearing about, and certainly long lines, which um, I think people don't often see as a problem, but I think it really is. I mean, there's no reason that we should have a voting process where people can lose two to three hours of a workday. And we're seeing some of these polls closing uh, at 6 o'clock, uh, meaning that if you've got to get your kids to school, now, how go do to that, work. I don't understand that. How can a poll close at 6 o'clock on a workday? This was the case in Kentucky, right? Exactly. Kentucky yeah. and Indiana, because Indiana splits time zones, so it's actually closing at 6 in Indiana as well. Now, what happens if people are still uh, standing in line? I've heard talk that they, don't, they won't close the doors if people are in line. And what have you heard today? They, um, they, they should let you vote. Um, it's, it's true in some other countries that you can't vote, but because of our long line problem, there is a, uh, the, the practice is that if you're in line at the poll closing time, you can keep voting. And, because of the long line problem, we had votes in Ohio being cast three, four, five hours after the polls closed in uh, 2004. So what have you heard today, though? Is, are the lineups such that, like, have you heard anything from the, the polls that closed early, like, for example, Indiana and Kentucky? Were people waiting in line? There's been lots of stories of long lines. There's been hearing at least isolated incidents of some problems with machines and things. I mean, our, our overall take, um, you know, sort of stepping back from some of the particulars of today, is that we just don't do enough to respect the vote and we don't fund it, we don't have clear standards. You know, we have 13,000 jurisdictions making their own decisions about the voting process in uh, the United States and, and that leads to a lot of snafus and problems and when you have a high turnout election, even though our turnout we would like to see higher, um, it's our system strains and it doesn't handle it well in a lot of places. The, uh, but nothing particular today. I haven't heard of any. We, sort we of heard stories leading up to the today in the in the early voting, of voting machines having a problem. Where right. People were pu pushing uh, Obama, and it comes up McCain, and they were complaining that they couldn't get the, couldn't get Obama. So have have you heard anything of how much was have you heard before today's vote, and have you heard right. anything from today? Right. Well, there's other folks that uh, sort of track that in a more meticulous way. We're 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 sort of structural reformers trying to change policy. There have been. Um, you know, definitely incidents going on. And, you know, I mean, again, thinking of it in a structural sense, we have private vendors who provide the voting equipment to run our elections. They're, they are for-profit companies that are trying to make money. They often kind of cut corners. They're poorly regulated. The, the certification process is kind of odd. It, it's a very difficult setup to actually get good equipment because we don't invest in it well. Um, one thing, though, I just wanted to make sure that we get into, because I've seen as these results come in, and they got, you know, Vermont blue and Kentucky red. I think this is the last presidential election that we're going to have in which this state-by-state -state obsession is going to dominate the way we talk about the election night. Uh, one of the exciting things, I have a letter in the New York Times today about what the national popular vote plan for president, which is moving state-by-state -state as a means to establish a national popular vote, popular vote for president through through a coordinated action in other states. Are and you talking about getting rid of the Electoral College? Getting effectively rid of it. You actually can make this change within the structure because this is something that within the current constitutional structure, states are empowered to establish rules governing the, um, governing the Electoral College that serve the interests of their people in the country. And the current system, which is put in by state statute, leads to all these safe states, you know, the safe red states and the safe blue states and a handful of swing states that get all the attention. And they have, states have the power to pass what's called an interstate compact, and that's what this national popular vote plan is. It's passed four states already. And it's to agree to give all of their electoral votes, not to whoever wins their state, but to who wins the national popular vote in all 50 states, and to do so in a concerted way once the number of states that have passed this agreement has enough electoral votes together to guarantee election of the president. Is there any support for this in either of the major parties? Oh, very strong support. It's passed, mm -hmm. four, it's passed in four states, um, you know, through the major parties. Um, and it's uh, passed, lever it's passed le legislative chambers in 21 states. And I think it has very strong prospects for winning by 2012. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Is, is there anything else that we should be looking for today, uh, later, mm -hmm. as the vote unfolds? Looking what at are some today, of the key issues? Um, I think that. What is quite plausible is that it won't be close enough for people to 
realize that the voting process once again has lots of flaws and lots of problems that should be Certainly fixed. that's what the Obama campaign has been planning. There's been a lot of critique of the Obama campaign that they haven't been saying very much about possible election irregularities and it seems their response is we're going to win this by enough that it won't matter. Is Maybe. I mean, so we um, never know because in the state-by-state -state system, you can win the national popular vote by a lot and then if you, you know, lose some key states by close margins. So that I think the conversation about voting that we may have at the end of the evening is whether that's happened, whether there's, uh, you know, states like Florida and Pennsylvania and Ohio that some people think that Obama will sweep, but if he doesn't, and it's actually really close in all three, and then there are a couple others that people expect him to win that suddenly we'll be talking about the voting processes, and then we'll realize there's been a lot of irregularities, a lot of problems. Um, but we know that the system is strained. It doesn't work well. There's lots of efforts to keep people from voting, lots of efforts or lots of problems with machines. And we know that's happening, and then it will be noticed and acted on if it seems like it's going to tip the election. Mm. Thank you very much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. I like the idea of the real news because we are in desperate need of independent sources of information and analysis.